Hi, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, uh, where today I'm going to take a look at a viewer requested uh, diabolical Sudoku from the Daily Telegraph. I think this was published in last Friday's paper, um, and sorry we haven't got round to it until now, but uh, we've had a lot of requests recently and we've been trying to work our way through them. Hopefully you'll have seen uh, Mark's uh, video earlier on, uh, on a particularly vicious uh, killer Sudoku. Um, but also just to mention that we do have a Patreon page now um, where you, you can become patrons of the site. Um, what that means is that for a small sum you become a patron and you support us in what we're doing. Um, and you know, no obligation obviously, but for some of you who are in a position to do so, we would really appreciate it. Um, as I say, and just to clarify, there's no intention yet that we're going to go behind paywalls or anything like that. All the videos will remain f free. Um, but when we reach milestones in terms of number of patrons, patrons, <laughs> um, we'll we'll do uh, extra videos. So at the moment, what we're saying is, once we reach 15 patrons, we'll do a uh, a special Sudoku video on a, an Okuyama um, Sudoku. So Okuyama is obviously the person we think creates the best Sudoku puzzles in the world. So that's to look forward to at some point hopefully. But without further ado, let's have a look at this and see how to solve it. So, um, okay, where would I start? Well, I can see this 8 and this 8 allows us to place an 8 in this square. Um, as usual, we'll go for pencil marks in 3x3 three three boxes. So where I can see that the number is limited to just exactly two positions in a 3x3 three three block, as is the case with eights up here, I'll make little pencil marks just to remind me of that fact. Um, now, what can we see? Uh, twos. This two and this two mean there must be a two in this square. Let's put that in. Uh, Pencil marks from sevens down at the bottom there. What do we need? Seven and nine to complete column five here. And you can see we have a nine here already. So the only place a nine can go in column five is down at the bottom. Uh, we should put that in. We'll put the seven in to complete the column as well. And you can see there's a few things we can do now. One of the things that's difficult when you when you do get a couple of breakthroughs like that is to stop yourself and make sure that you record all of the sort of information that naturally follows. So these nines allow us to pencil mark nines over here, look. But we also need to make sure we use the seven as well. Seven and seven and this seven here mean there's a seven in this square. It's only where a place of seven can go. Um, and what more can we see? There's, there's actually quite a lot of early information that we're getting here. Um, so nines are locked into one of those two positions, I think. I'm just going to check this central row. Uh, one, three, six, and eight to place. And you can see the six is forced into one of these two squares, as as is the three. So we've got a three and a six here, and a three and a six here. So I'll just record that because these sorts of powerful pairs are very nice to find. Um, maybe we can go further than that. Just, I feel like I'm missing an obvious thing. But let, anyway, let's carry on second. So we've now got four and nine to place in the middle. So we can place those like this. Um, twos here. These two twos and this two mean this square must be a two. Let's put that in. Ah, of course, and now this 3 here and this 3 here interact on this 3x3 three three block. Where can we place the 3 in this 3x3 three three block? Well, because of this 3, we can actually only squeeze it into that square. So that's a 3, and therefore this must be a 6. And we can pencil mark 3s. I must obey my own rules and make sure I do as many pencil marks as I can here. Um, and this must be a 6, because it's the only place a 6 can now go. And anything more coming from the 6s? Can't see anything immediate. Obviously we've got 4 and 8 to still place in the block. This has to be an 8. This must be a 4. Uh, four. 
and that resolves the 4 and the 9 so that's 4 and the 9 must be this way round and now we can unwind the earlier pencil marks so if we look at this 3 by 3 block uh, we now this 9 must go up here therefore this must be a 3 and this must be a 1 and all of that was fairly straightforward so I suspect it's about to get a lot harder um, now I just want to make sure that I record pencil marks as mentioned and take a quick look at this column uh, 3, 5 and uh, 9 to place hmm. I'm going to notate this square as 5 or a 9 with a diabolical puzzle we shouldn't be over ambitious there's going to come a point where you're going to get stuck if you just stick to these basic pencil marks um, normally this only takes you so far so we have to choose the moment that we're going to start noting down pairs that's my preferred method as I switch to identifying squares that can only contain exactly two digits like this one um, and I find that helps me to see some of the logic so let's take a look now at uh, column 9 you can see we need to place the numbers 1, 4 and 9 and we have a 4 here so I've got what a pair there I can place, so 1 and 9 I can actually use hybrid pencil marks, there must be a 4 in one of these two positions uh, oh hang on 1 and 9 here, so this actually has to be a 4 let's put that in in case that's going to help us so this is a 1 or a 9 pair, so we now have a 1, 9 pair in column 9 and this 4 which interacts with this 4 on this block to allow me to pencil mark fours into those two squares. Um, okay, let's check uh, row nine. That would be in the next place I will be looking to identify more of these restricted squares. So three, five, six, and seven. So this is three, five, seven. Mm. This ah, uh, that's six or seven. Okay, let's I notate that. This is five or six, and this can be anything. So we're starting to find some of these interesting squares now, and our, our challenge is to find enough of them to spot a pattern. Um, and also to try and make sure that we're not missing any of the easy numbers. So. This square, this square can only be a 3 or a 5, look, because 3, 5 and 9 to place, we have a 9 here. And sometimes if you find that you can't find enough restricted rows and columns, you can also try restricted blocks. So this block's a little bit interesting because it has five numbers in it already. And you're but I can pencil mark sevens because of the sevens here but you can see the eight and the seven here that's two numbers that aren't appearing in this block so I know this square is going to be a double on the remaining numbers which are what one and one and nine so that's interesting that's mirroring this one and nine here um, ah and in fact this seven here means this square although it's not restricted to a double it is restricted to a 1, 8 or a 9 and now look at column 4 we have the 1, 8 here, the 1, 9 and the 1, 8, 9 so we now have a hidden triple there in column 4 now that might be very helpful because effectively the triple means that we've now got 6 numbers sorted out so we can add the 1, 8 and 9 to the 2, 4 and the 6 and we know we're just looking for 3, 5 and 7 to place so this square, because of the 3 and the 5, this square can only be a 7. Oops, not an 8. Don't put an 8 there. That's not going to be right. 7. Um, so this is a 3-5 pair now. And look at that. That's lovely, actually. Um, that's lovely because this 3-5 here matches this 3-5. So there's something maybe going on now in row 7 of the grid. So let's let's do a stare of that and see if we can see anything. So the only problem with this is that we have so few numbers um, in this row, and I can hear my children coming up the stairs, which is another problem. Um, I will try and concentrate. 
one, two, four, six, seven, nine. So this square here, one, two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four. Not seeing anything there immediately. There might be something there, but it's not immediately jumping out to me. This seems to be the most restricted square. And I guess we can also the twos in here allow us to pencil mark twos into those two positions. Um, okay. So this square, this can only be a one or an eight now, I think, because of the nine here. So, so we've got we've got a one nine here, a one eight here. Um, it's just. Check some of these other positions. I think I'm look. I'm I'm thinking about um, this row because obviously we've got one nine and a one eight. Although this row is going to have to use the crossing entries. I think so. This square is very unrestricted. This square uh, four, five eight. This square is interesting. That can only be a one five or an eight. Okay, so there, there is a bent quadruple, probably not helpful, but let's just, you can see here, if we had all of this, if we had this square, this square, this square, and this square in the same row of the grid, it would be very obvious to see that we, we would have found the locations of a quadruple on the numbers 1, 5, 8, and 9. Now, we haven't got quite that here, but we do, sometimes bent quadruples can be important and we talked about this in a video from a week or so ago what you have to make sure of is that there is one so-called uh, non-restricted digit so if we go through the digits involved in this quadruple you can see that the number one sees all the other number ones so this is restricted the number five sees this five there's only two fives in this quadruple and they both see each other. The number eight, there's two eights and they see each other across the row here. But the number nines don't. The num this number nine does not see this number nine. And that's really nice because you need what, exactly one uh, non-restricted non number in a bent quadruple for it to be useful. Um, now, why is it useful? Well, let's think about what happens here now with these numbers uh, 9 and 1. Let's just take th this example here. We can take either end, it'll have the same effect, but let's pick this one. So this can be a 9, that would be one possibility, or it can be a 1. Now if it's a 1, what happens? If it's a 1, this square will be an 8. So that's a 1 and an 8 in the row already, therefore this square will have to be a 5. Now once this square is a 5, this square will be a 9. So either this is a 9, or this is a 9. Now can you see why that's important? It's important because it eliminates a 9 as a candidate from this square. Um, because either this is a 9 or this is a 9, they both see this square, so this cannot be a 9. Now if we think about why we pencil mark the 9 in here, it's because of the 9 here and the 9 here. So we know there was a 9 either in this square or this square, and we've just proved it can't be in this square. So this becomes the 9. Now, that is lovely, because for many reasons. Firstly, that means this square is 3, 5, so it's restricted. But let's look at the effect of the 9 on, on this 3x3 three three block. You can see immediately this is a 1. This has got to be an 8 now. And therefore, this is a 9. Uh, now, can we go further than that? This 8, yeah, 8 and 1 is now unwound. Um, 5, 3, 5. We may get some more joy down here now, so let's just have a quick look. We're looking for 4, 6 and 7. So this is a 4, 7. I'm certainly going to try and 
keep track of all the doubles. Um, this is four, six, or seven. Am I going to notate that? I might as well, given that I know what it is. And let's go back up here now and work on row one. So two, four, and five to place. So another double there, two, four. Another double here, four, five. Nothing here. And of course, we're going to have a look at this row because it's got five numbers in it. And one, four, six, and eight. Mm. Oh, one and six here, and four and six here. So that is a little interesting. This square be not much actually. Uh, can be a one, can't be a two, can be a five, can't be a six, can't be a nine. So I think this square is a one or a five. Uh, that is right. Okay, that's good. That's good because now we've got another hidden triple now in column seven. So we've got one, five, and six into these three squares which means the remaining numbers are 2 and 9, so that's a 2 or a 9. Is that helpful? Surely. Uh, ah. Oh, look, we can resolve this 8. 8, 8, this has got to be an 8 because there's an 8 here. Let's put that in. That means this is a 1 or a 5. Surely. I'll bother. Um, So the fact this is a 1, 6 means the 5 is locked into one of these two squares in this 3x3 three three block. So there's a 5 in one of those two positions up here. This square, 1, okay, it can't be a 1, can be a 3, can't be a 4, can be a, can't be a 5, because we've just pencil marked 5s up here, can't be a 6 can be a 7, damn, <laughs> can't be an 8, can't be a 9, so this is a 3, 7, that's a 4, 7, mm -hmm. okay, um, 4, 7, let's check these two squares, um, 1, 4, 5, 7, can't see a way. Am I missing something there of restricting these, either of these any further? Um, it's worth just taking a moment for me to just stare at this just in case I'm missing a trick. Uh, I've got this 3-5 going on here as well. I sort of don't feel like I've used that properly yet. That's locking a 3 into one of these two squares. Oh, it's eliminating a 5 from there, obviously. I should have spe spotted that sooner because of the 3, 5. Obviously, this can't be a 5. Right, well, I think we're left with column 2. Uh, oh, this square's going to be good, isn't it? Maybe. Uh, 1, 4, 6. Not that good, but something. 6. Now, oh, this square can be anything. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Um, okay, let's continue down column two here. So we need still need one, two, three, four, and six. But we've got a two and a six here, look. So that leaves one, three, and four for these two positions. Um, Ah, oh, this one can only be a 1 or a 4 because of the 3, 5 pair. So that's nice. And this can be 1, 3, or 4. 
Uh, whoa, there's loads going on here now. Um, one, three, I'm looking, first thing I'm looking at is we've got another bent quadruple. Um, okay, if we look at this, three, seven, four, seven, one, three, four, one, four, that's clearly a quadruple on the numbers one, three, four, and seven. Now, does it obey our criteria. So the ones see each other, that's fine. The threes see each other, that's fine. The fours don't see each other, so the fours are restricted, are, are sorry, are not restricted, and the sevens see each other. So the four is the interesting number this time. Um, and we have to see how that's going to interact. So how do we do that? So if this is a 4, obviously that has an effect. If it's not a 4, what happens? This will be a 1, which will give us a 3, 4, 7 pair across here. So that will eliminate a 4 from this square as well. So we now have, so we now know this can't be a 4. This is the key thing that we, we've appreciated from this. This cannot take a 4, this square. Now, how can we use that. Well, let's do it again. Now we've got another bent triple, haven't we? 1, 5, 1, 5, 7, 1, 4, 7, 1, 4. So we've now got a bent triple on 1, 4, 5, and 7. <laughs> um, sorry if my mind's a bit stuck in the rut. There's probably loads of other ways of doing this, but I'm on the subject of bent quadruples, so um, I think I just said bent triples, but bent quadruples is, is where my mind's at. So and um, they seem to be just all around here. So let's check this one. Fives see each other. Ones don't see each other. Okay. Uh, fours do see each other. Sevens do see each other. So now we have to focus on ones. That's going to be that's going to be huge, isn't it? Um, so this could be a one, but if it's not, if this is not a one, this will be a five, and that will give us a one, four, seven. Uh, triple in this cage. So either this is a 1 or these three squares contain a 1. So you can immediately see this square here cannot have a 1 in it. So this is now 3, 4, there you go. That's nice. So we've now got a 3, 4, 7 triple that we have established in row 8. So this can't be a 7 now. And now we've got a 1, 5. This is a lovely puzzle. Now we've got a 1, 5 double in column 3, which means this is a 4. I think I had fully pencil marked that square. Yeah, so 4 here. This now must be a 7. Now let's make sure that we pencil mark everything we can off the back of this. 7, 7, 4. Now it was... So this is, has to be a 2, I think. Let's remove that 4, which means this must be a 5. I'm just trying to be very sure that I don't, uh, I don't miss the, the, uh, the obvious consequences of this, because I feel like we've just made a massive breakthrough in terms of solving the puzzle. Um, twos, I'm not seeing anything more with the twos, this one five pair, that's fine, five, five, two nine, this square now feels quite restricted, what can it be, it could be a two, can't be a three, can't be a four, can't be a five, can be a six still I think, can't be 7, 8, or 9. So this one's 2, 5, or 6. Oh, hang on, it's 5 here, so that's 2 or 6. Um, oh, this, is this right? 1, 6, 1, 6. This has to be a 4. Assuming I pencil marked that correctly before. 4. This can't be a 4. Yes, so this is a 4. Let's put that in. Um, well, it's not giving me anything extra, which is annoying. Let's just 
just remove the two from this square. Uh, okay, I think we're going to have to look at column eight now. It's the only one I haven't pencil marked. Hell of a lot. Oh, there's a hell of a lot of squares here that have two possibilities. Uh, this one doesn't. We have a bug chance here. Uh, what's that called? Is it the. Uh, what does bug stand for? By, verse, by value universal grave? Is that right? Um, no doubt you'll tell me in the chat, but th there is an odd property that arises in Sudoku grids where all of the numbers, or all of the squares but one, have two possibilities. But anyway, we need to establish that's the case. It might not be two, three, six, and seven. Um, nah, I don't think it's going to be. So this is three, six, or seven, I think. Um, this one here is two, three, or six. Is that right? Ah, oh, no, no, this can't be a three because of the three, five pair that we had already in row seven. So that's two, two, six. Okay, so now we have a two, six double now in column eight, which means that cannot be a six and that we have we've got it uh, this is it um, okay so we need to talk about this um, goodness knows how I'm going to explain it but uh, I'm actually gonna have to pause the video now for the childcare reasons but I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna explain why this puzzle is now solved because we can write the number one into this square so pause the video uh, if you can't see how to do that, and I'll, uh, I'll explain it in a moment when I come back. Right, okay, so I'm back now. Um, so I was just saying this square here has to be a 1. Now why? Well, the thing is about a bug is what it's identified is that almost always in this situation where you get to every cell can be two possibilities except for one cell. If we examine what happens when we make selections in this cell, let's imagine for a start we made this selection here for a six. Just then you can see that there would be two sixes in column two. There would be two sixes in this box, and there would be two sixes in row three. Now, if you scan the whole of the rest of the puzzle, what you'll also find um, is that there are there basically each digit appears twice in every row, column, and three by three block. Now, if we unwind the chain, therefore, if we pick one number uh, into a cell, you will you'll reach a solution. But if you pick the other number, you would just get a switching parity and a different solution. So you'd have two solutions to this puzzle. So it is a, a sort of super long extension of the uniqueness videos that we've done over the last few weeks and months, where we've talked about the importance of making sure that you don't end up with deadly patterns. So I suppose a very simple example of a bug situation would be uh, in the classic X-Wing type arrangement, so I might just put one of these on screen to show you. Okay, I've managed to find this, this example on the internet, and it's exactly what I'm looking for. So let's have a look at this grid here. Now you can see here that we've got the so-called deadly pattern that we know we need to avoid. But let's look at properties of this pattern. You can see that the number 6 appears twice in column 1. It appears twice in row 2, and it appears twice in this 3x3 three three block, and the same is true of the number 8. So we know if we reach this sort of condition, and you can you can add rows and columns of unknowns that share the same properties here, but if you, if you reach situations where there's two positions for every candidate in every row, column, and 3x3 three three block, there is a, a uniqueness issue, and it's simply an extension of this logic. Now, so what does that mean in terms of our puzzle? Here it is back again. Um, well, it means that this square here is the one we need to focus on. You can see if we pick a three here, we're going to end up with a problem. Three is appearing twice, twice, and twice here. Same as true of a six. Only if we choose the one do we escape from the bug. 
Now, if we choose the one, I think the whole puzzle then collapses because you can, yeah, you can see everything is going to chain very, very quickly, um, and it all becomes very doable just through that one little trick. Um, so this, it's quite a nice technique if you, you know, if you just have to remember it. Now, there's only one small note of caution. That I should uh, I should tell you, which is that sometimes, very very occasionally, you will end up with this pattern where there is every uh, cell can contain two possibilities, but one cell can contain three possibilities, and it won't actually be a bug, um, and that's because there will be a number in the grid um, that you'll have to study to check um, that can actually go in three positions across a row column or three by three block. It's an un, it's a very rare situation. You're, you're on safe ground if you make the assumption that we've spoken about, but on the other hand I'd be remiss if I didn't just warn you that sometimes this problem does come up. Um, so just to be aware of it in case uh, you're unlucky that one time. But there we go, there's the puzzle finished. Um, I hope this was useful to you. Lots of stuff on bent quadruples today. I think we cracked the whole puzzle basically apart from the bug with three bent quadruples in a row which is rather nice and a few hidden triples in there for good measure. Um, if you enjoy the channel please do subscribe. As I mentioned before please consider becoming our patron. We really appreciate that. I'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.